I'm always a student, and so I'm trying to learn more and more. That's all. And uh, and about uh, how the, the Lord Himself is the Upaya. Yes. So that was very simple uh, philosophy. Or they say, cycle Swami, <laughs> cycle Mama, cycle Mama. <laughs> Obviously, we could not have come to Vaishnavism without Iskon. Iskon. Modi closed the country. Yeah, I had to fly. I got the last flight out from Trichy oh. to Singapore. <laughs> In the middle of uh, summer, she was found it very difficult. So I said, "Okay, you go to Kota Canal." <laughs> so I took her to Kota Canal and said, "You stay there. I will be in Sri Lanka." <laughs> Namaskaram. This is a very special episode of. Swaira Lapam. This is probably the first episode that we are recording in English completely. And today we have a special guest in this podcast. Welcome, uh, Keshava Ramanujas Ji. We are very glad to host you in this podcast, which we have named Swaira Lapam, which uh, can be translated to be uh, free talk. Okay. so this podcast is basically about uh, discussing and uh, speaking having conversations with uh, various scholars and all when i met you i felt like uh, i wanted to know your journey and also i wanted to share your journey with uh, our uh, viewers so this podcast so welcome you uh, adi en ramanujan dasan adi en ramanujan dasan shrimati ramanujan namaha shrimati ramanujan namaha Uh, very nice to hear those words from your mouth so let's begin let's start uh, from your childhood mm. so let's uh, let me introduce you to the audience this is keshav ramanujas ji he is from australia he uh, was into iskon for some time and then he came to ramanuja sampradaya so that is the basic uh, summary of his life mm-hmm. if i can say so so let's uh, know more about him from himself okay, okay. so um originally i was born in sydney australia nice and uh, i grew up there at that time in the early 70s uh when i was in high school the only form of vaishnavism that was uh, uh spreading around the world was iskon Yeah, yeah. So there was no possibility to meet anybody from Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya in Australia at that time. So I came in contact with Iskon people and I began to read the books like uh, Bhagavad Gita and uh, different books Bhagavad Purana. Hmm. And uh, I thought this is very nice, you know. So um I joined Iskon after I left high school I joined Iskon and uh, I worked in Iskon for many years. Mm. Okay so how did you get into contact with uh, the Iskon people um okay so uh Iskon people they go out and they contact people on the street yes so um i was i was walking in sydney australia i was walking in the street what well, uh, what was your age at that, that went uh, at that point of time uh, how old were you i think i was about 12 12 okay okay yeah, mm. yeah. and then uh you were walking down the street yeah i was walking down the street yes. and i saw some iskon person mm-hmm. and he had a shaved head and he had a sikha and he was giving some literature and he was giving some incense agarbatti and he was asking for some donation i was a school a school boy and so i asked him okay well what is this about because mm-hmm. it looks very exotic to me very different mm mm-hmm. So he said you come come to our temple. We have a temple. And please come to our temple. We have a we have a program on Sunday. You come to the temple and uh you you'll see what it's all about. So mm. I thought okay. So I, myself and my brother uh we went to the temple mm. uh, for for uh Sunday and uh we saw some amazing things. People they were worshiping Sri Vigrahara of Radha Krishna. and they were uh they were they were giving uh prasadams which we never tasted anything like this mm-hmm. before 
And so it's very interesting. So then we got some books and we started reading those books and we agreed, okay, this, is, uh, this makes a lot of sense. It was talking about the soul, that we are not the body and, uh, and the, we are the atma within the, within the body and that all atmas are the same, but, uh, but uh, the, the, the nature of the atma, the nature of the atma is service to God. Yes. yes. Yeah. So Sheshatva. So they, they're also preaching that, that we should serve God, we should do. They're preaching bhakti yoga. They, they say bhakti yoga. Mm. Uh, uh, anyway, we can, we can say they preach bhakti and they do some bhakti, they are devotion to God. And uh, so I, I joined, after high school, I joined that movement and uh, I became, uh, I became a, uh, uh, I took initiation in that. At that time, there was the, the original founder of uh, ISKCON, Prabhupada, was living. Okay. So I took uh, initiation from him and uh, I began to learn some things about uh, philosophy and about uh, Murti Puja and all these different things. So I, 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 I joined and I said, then I went to, then I got the chance also to come to India. Okay. So it was, uh, you were 12 when you got to know about ISKCON hmm. and then you studied uh, their literature and all. Hmm. Uh, do you, uh, were you visiting their temple often? Yeah, I was visiting the temple often. Hmm. Every, every day after school, hmm. uh, while I was still, my father told me he didn't want me to join ISKCON before I finished high school. Okay. okay. So he, he said, no, no, I won't allow you to do that. If you, after high school, if you want to do that, you can do that. But, okay. But you finish your HSC hmm. after that, you know, 12th standard, you finish that mm-hmm. and then you can do whatever you like. So how was the reception from your family? Um, initially not very good because my father an, was an advocate. Hmm. My mother was a nurse hmm. and uh, they naturally they wanted me to go in a different direction. So yes, they, my course. father wanted me to become an advocate also. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Although they were not much satisfied, you joined uh, ISKCON. Right. Yes. So it was after high school. Right. So what was it like? Joining ISKCON means you just dedicated your life for ISKCON. Yeah. Yes. So you went to, uh, to the temple and you started living there. How was that? I started living there. Uh, I first thing that I did was 1976, mm. I, uh, went, I went to India. Um, they have a festival in, in, in West Bengal, mm. in, uh, in a place called Mayapur, mm. where this is Chaitanya Vaishnavism, it's a ty- type of Bengali Vaishnavism, so their headquarters is there. Okay. So, so they have a big festival there at, uh, at uh, Chaitra Purnima. Mm. So I said, okay, I want to go to that. So we all went to that. And uh, I also visited Vrindavan and I also came to South India also and saw Sri Rangam. Oh, oh. I wanted to see different places. Okay. So I visited different places all over India. Mm. So how, how old were you when you first visited India? Actually, uh, to be very truthful, my parents uh, came to India to see the Taj Mahal mm. and they brought the children mm. on a boat. Oh. But this was, when I, this was when I was about eight years old or something like that so but we we didn't go to the Taj Mahal we stayed on the boat hmm. and uh, the boat was in Mumbai and so we did we, that was the first coming hmm. close to India but but really the first time that I uh, fully uh, uh, came to India was 76 1976 okay so uh, what when were you born I mean uh, what 19, 1958. 1958. Yeah. So 76, you were 18. Yeah. Yes, you were 18 when you reached uh, India. Hmm. Very nice, very nice. So how was your experience? Australia and India. First time visiting India, the culture and all. Yeah, completely different. Completely yeah. different. Uh, so uh, we flew from Australia. We flew from Sydney to Perth and then from Perth to uh, Chennai, that time it was called Madras, mm. and uh, there was a small ISKCON center there, but they locked it and everybody had gone to West Bengal for oh, the festival. Mm. So we, so the, the Chokidar, the security person, he said, eh, you can sleep here on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on, on the porch, you can put a mat out and you can sleep, in the morning you can take bath mm. and you can... Uh, you can even even uh, even a, a man was coming down the street 
with a iron yeah, yeah, with, yeah. The, with the hot coals in it. <laughs> so for te- in that uh, in that time, ten paisa to 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 iron, iron, iron a dhoti. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So it was a completely different world here. Very different. Yeah. Mm. So you must have got a glance uh, when you visited the temples, right? Or are they westernized? The temples which are in uh, uh, Australia and all. Uh, yeah, they're very different. It's very different because in in foreign countries. In foreign countries, you have uh, okay, you have uh, murtis, mm. and you have murti puja going on. And but but ISKCON is a is a preaching movement, so they're trying to make outreach to people all the time. They're trying to to bring more people to Vaishnavism. Mm, mm. So whereas in in India, of course, in India also people are preaching uh, Vaishnavism, different forms of Vaishnavism. But um, it, it's it's not it's a it's more like the 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 uh, the temples in Iskon are, are like mats. They're like matam. Mm-hmm. So matam is a place that is push is preaching a particular doctrine. Yes, yes. Yeah. Whereas a temple like this Ranganath Swami temple here is for everybody. Everybody comes, no matter what his philosophy, no matter what his idea, he comes and he sees Lord Ranganatha. Mm. But in uh, in Iskon, they they want. It's more like a matam. They're trying to. They're trying, to, they're trying to preach the particular philosophy of Bengal Vaishnavism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe even the temples uh, before were like a spot where uh, preaching was going on. Mm. But later on, maybe they transformed. They were like a centers of education right. before. But yes. uh, later on, they have changed now. <laughs> okay. So you came to uh, Chennai yeah. and maybe and then, then went to Mayapur. Yeah. Went yeah, to Mayapur yeah. and then I went to Brindavan in Brindavan. UP. Okay. Yes. So how was the experience in Vrindavan? Vrindavan was nice because the whole, the whole, uh, in Mayapur, of course, it's all Chaitanya Vaishnavism mm. in Mayapur. But in, in Vrindavan, there were many different types of Vaishnavas. Mm, mm. There were Sri Vaishnavas. There were Balaba Vaishnavas. There mm. were Nimbarka Vaishnavas. Mm. There were Ramanandis. Mm. There were so many different types of Vaishnavas. So I thought, oh, this is very interesting because so far, I only understood there was one kind of Vaishnavism. Mm-hmm. Then I came to know there's many different types. Oh, yes, yes. So, uh, when I was reading some book uh, by Radhanath Swami, uh. My Journey Home or something like that, Yeah, yeah. his description of Vrindavan is completely different from what we see in now. Mm. So, you must have been to that Vrindavan, right? <laughs> 30 years ago. What do you think uh, are the changes? Yeah, there's a lot of changes in modern Vrindavan, of course. Mm. But even if we read in Shastra, if we read Bhagavad Purana and we read the descriptions of Krishna Leela yes, in yes. Vrindavan, it'll be very, uh, very lush place, jungle place. Yes, but yes. actually, modern Vrindavan is on, is on, the, it's on the edge of the Rajasthani desert. Mm. So, it's quite uh, dry and quite... Uh, quite different climate than you read in the you know I was reading the book and it was saying oh this is a jungly place mm. then I went there and I thought oh no this is not a jungly place anymore mm. but Radna Swami uh, he uh, what I used to do is later on in ISKCON I took people to South India and I would take them on a tour of South India because many people in ISKCON they they wanted to see the places in South India and Chaitanya, during his lifetime in 1510 or 1512 AD, had come even to Sri Rangam. Yes, yes. And he had stayed here for Chattamasya. And uh, so I had visited all these places, Tirupati and Melkote and all these different places in South India. So many people, my friends in Iskand, they said, you've been to all these places that Chaitanya went to. Uh, can you take us? So I took uh, Radha Swami first time I brought him here. Oh, yeah. Nice. So, what were you doing after coming to ISKCON? Like uh, after your, after 18? Yeah, so, um, it, 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 of course, in ISKCON they do things like they sell books and they preach to people. They also have people in the temples who are doing Archika work. Mm. So, I was also doing Archika work in the temples. Okay, okay. Yeah. And I studied, I, I was studying their literature, but it's very, it's not uh, very detailed, mm. you know. In North India, the, the method of puja is very simple compared yes. to in South. Mm. Yeah. So you were doing Archaka work? Yeah, basically. basically yeah. So how many years? Uh, how many years? Um, even now, even now, sometimes yes, of course, yes. it's uh, gone people, they'll ask me to come and do some, some ceremony. 
yeah i know that but uh, how many years were you in iskon like uh, well uh, 1976 and then we and i don't know that you can say that there's an actual is there a date when i left iskon and became came to sri vaishnav sampradaya i don't know hmm. but uh, okay uh, well, how was the transition what how happened? was the transition okay hmm. so the transition was like um uh i came to, i was in vrindavan hmm. and because i was an archer in australia hmm. i wanted to know more about pancharatra agama and these things so in shri in uh, chaitanya vaishnavism they have a big book called hari bhakti vilas hmm. in that book is describing uh, anusthanam and all these different things Mm. for for gaudiya vaishnavas for okay. chaitanya vaishnavas okay. so i was reading that book that book is not is not followed by iskon strictly mm. because they make it uh, 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 they make uh, some adjustments for for modern days okay okay so i was study i was studying that and i thought okay i was in uh, i was in uh, i was in australia i was in new zealand i was then i decided to go to fiji So I was an archika in Fiji. Oh. I liked Fiji because uh, half the population were from Indian descent. Okay. So a lot of South Indians there, a lot of people. Uh and so I liked Fiji. I I didn't think that I it's possible for me to come and live in India mm. first full time full time. Then after a while I decided I'm going to come and I'm going to stay in India full time. Okay. So let me understand this. You came to India, mm. you learned some things and you went back to mm. Australia. Yeah. So you were uh, uh, coming and going. Coming and going. Yeah, okay. every time I come because uh, be, being an archika, I will come to Vrindavan, I will arrange for uh dresses and mukut mm. and alankaram for the murtis in Australia and then I'll, I'll come back. Mm. So I used to go with the head of the temple. He he would take me. and i would do all the shopping for the for the murtis and then after the shopping he said to me oh if you want to go to south india you can go mm-hmm. you take some money and go go wherever you like like that okay while while all these things are being made so i went to south india so i went to tirupati uh at at that time tirupati there was no vaikuntha queue shed at all <laughs> so i went to you just go to the the office and uh i you just walk in the in the front gate of tirupati but they said oh but you are a foreigner so sh- should you go inside mm-hmm. so i said okay it, it, he said we have a form you fill out the form and you sh- you say that you are you are vaishnava and we'll let you go inside mm-hmm. so go to the office so i went to the office i went to the office and uh i went in the office and the f- fellow had a form to fill out ttd form and uh, i looked at him and i i just said to him kausalya supraja rama purva sandhya pravartate utistana i just started chanting supravaram and he was oh no 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 you don't have to you don't have to sign this form you are a bhakta mm-hmm. he understood he accepted so he said okay you go so i will send somebody with you and you go straight in so he went straight in the front gate straight in the front gate all the way up to beyond the beyond the dwarpalakas now now you go and you cannot go beyond the dwarpalakas but that time you could go all the way inside mm. and had a very good darshan and then after coming out at that time i was uh i was uh, i was a brahmachari mm. and uh so in iskon the brahmacharis they wear saffron they wear gera yes. you know so so when i came out then they they want to give some prasadams to me they want to give some pulihodra and some uh they want to give some uh, ladu small ladu freely like that so oh, so they never saw a, they never saw a western person before like that so so they were ah oh, foreign swami foreign come here foreign swami come here come here <laughs> so they gave me a lot of prasadam and i thank him very much and i got a very good reception in tirupati the first time i went there very good mm-hmm. and i visited many times over the over the over the years and of course it's it's more and more difficult to get darshan now yes of course but there's still still are ways and i have uh i've got many of my friends uh one uh, one time my friend said oh we are coming to india and going so maybe we can maybe we can buy a ticket for the friday abhishekam 
Tiramanjana mm -hmm. on Fridays. But that time the, the queue was two, two years, mm -hmm. two years. So I said, okay. So I bought a ticket. Then after, then I came to India again. I went back to foreign. I came back to India. I went back to foreign. I came to India second year. And I went for that. And I was there on the right day. So all of the archanas in the morning, Sprite from Superbottom, Tomala Archana, everything I saw. So like that. Very nice. Then I decided after that, and I came to Sri Rangam. And when I first came to Sri Rangam, I had a very good reception. Uh, ISKCON people had come to Sri Rangam before, a few people, and Rangaraj Bhatta, uh, some, uh, Murli Bhatta's father, was very nice. He was in uh, North, North Chitravidi. And so he said to me, he said to me, you can stay at my house. You stay at my house. Mm. I thought, okay, nice. Mm. Like the, there's, a, there's a porch, you can sleep, and then you can go, you can go to the Kola room and take bath. And then you can, yeah, everything's there. No, also very nice. Okay, so that, that was fun. So then uh, I met some other Sri Vaishnavas at that time. I met this uh, Parasara uh, Lakshmi Narasim Bhatta. Mm. I think his son is there now, but he, he, I think he's in, he may be in Andhra right now. But I met him uh, first. And then I met several different other Sri Vaishnavas like that. Then... Uh, I, le I, 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 I went on more places. I thought, let me look at the book. Where Chaitanya has gone, I'll go. So I went to all these places, uh, Tiruvattur in, uh, in uh, Tiruvannaveli district and Sri Vaikuntam and uh, Alva Tirunagari and all these places. And then even Udupi. What I went was to the Udupi. first place? Tiruvattar. Tiruvattur, yeah. Tiruvattur? Tiruvattur. Tiruvattar, Tiruvattar. It, near to the border of Kerala. Uh, Kerala, yes. yes. It's called Tiruvattar. Adi, okay. Adi Kesha with Tiruvattar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tiruvattar, yes, yes. Yeah. So it's famous in the, in the story of Chaitanya. It's famous that Chaitanya went there. Yeah. So I went to all these places and uh, I became interested. When I, later, when I came to India, when I moved to India, I said, okay, I'm going to move to India. So that time when I moved to India, I decided I'm going to move to India and I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to go to Mukti Narayana. Mm. In those days, no helicopters. Mm -hmm. So only by walk. So I, when, I moved, when I moved to India, I, uh, I came to uh, Kathmandu and I took a bus to Pokhara and I got down and I walked. Mm -hmm. And it took 10 days to reach there. Yeah, 10 days walking, okay, okay. <laughs> fully every day. And then uh, it was very nice, nice temple there and uh, many salagramas. And uh, so I, the three or four salagramas I kept and I, and I came back. Then I went to Vrindavan and I, uh, I, became, I joined the Iskon temple in Vrindavan. I was also doing Archika work there. Mm -hmm. That was just after the time when Prabhupada passed away. Okay. So mm -hmm. you had met uh, Prabhupada directly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Several, Any several experiences times. with him? Um, he, he came, I, I saw him in Vrindavan, I saw him in Mayapur in 1976. He came also, after that he came to Australia. So he was in, um, in Melbourne. So at that time, at that time I was, so we're jumping back a little bit here. At that time I was in high school, I, I saved some money and I flew down to Melbourne. Mm. And I went to some programs. He was opening a, he was opening a temple in mm. Melbourne, mm. big temple. And he asked everybody that he asked everybody, you should, you should, for we're going to do prana pratista of some deities. So, for doing prana pratista, purusha suktam is very important. Mm. So, he said, you, you learn purusha suktam. So, many people they were trying to learn purusha suktam, but they, they were learning in a, in a modern way by hearing the tape and not sitting with an acharya. That's okay. But he, he, gave, he gave us in English, Lippi. Uh, how to and we started to learn Prusasuktam. That was uh, that originally that was Shukla Yajaveda Madhyandina mm -hmm. uh, Prusasuktam Hari okay. Oma Sahasra Sirika Purukaha like this. Mm -hmm. So then then uh, when I moved to Vrindavan, then I said, okay, I'm going to learn more. I was a pujari in, in the temple. And uh, I became the pujari for Prabhupada's samadhi. So they have a samadhi, Deha samadhi for Prabhupada in Vrindavan. He passed away there. 
And so I, during the construction phase of that, I became the Archika there. And uh, then, so that for about three years. Oh. And then I was the only Archika during, during the construction phase because it was difficult, you can, it, ha, it was a difficult uh, construction. So there was many things there, dangerous things. So you have to go inside and do the puja and come out. Mm. Yeah. So then I started to meet different people in Vrindavan. So I met one person from Radha Raman Temple, which is a famous temple in Vrindavan. Uh, Chaitanya Vaishnavism, they have uh, six Goswamis. And one, one of the Goswamis' name is Gopal Bhatta. He's come from Sri Rangam. Mm. According to their story, he comes from Sri Rangam. And Murli's, Murli and uh, um, uh, Rangaraj Bhatta, they say it's the same family. We don't know. But uh, they say it's the same family. Okay, nice. So then that person met Chaitanya when he came here in 1510 or 1512 for Chattamasya. Mm. And he became inspired to go to North India. And he was a great scholar. Mm. And so he wrote this book, Hari Bhakti Vilas. So oh. when I was interested in this book, Hari Bhakti Vilas, and he was the author. Mm. So his, his disciples have the temple Radha Raman. So I met some people there. And I began to study that book directly in Sanskrit. But the problem was, the problem was that I will ask too many questions. Hmm. So, for example, uh, and this was, just now we have, just now we have a Chandan Goswami, and before that Padmanabha Goswami, and before that they have, a, they have, a, they had Vishwamba Goswami. So Vishwamba Goswami and Prabhupada were friends. And he, at that time, he was in Radharaman. So I, I, I met him and I, I began to study Hari Bhakti Vilas with him. So I studied with him like that. So then, as we're going through, I will ask a question. Uh, what is Ankurapanam? What is Ankurapanam? I don't know what Ankurapanam is. I, the Sanskrit I understand. It means growing sprouts. Hmm. But why? Why grow sprouts? Why do this? Does it, does it make any sense? So I asked him, so this Ankurapanam, do you do it? He said, actually, we don't do it anymore. Mm. We don't do it anymore. It's something that they still do in South mm. India, but in North India, they, they gave it up. They don't do it anymore. He said many things, if you want to understand exactly these things, because this book was written 500 years ago. Mm. So in those days, there were many things that they did, which they now have abandoned. They don't do it anymore. Mm. So he said, if you really want to know, you have to go to Sri Rangam. Okay, so then I, then I said, okay, so I have to go to Sri Rangam. So then, uh, after some time, I moved to Bangalore. I moved to Bangalore, and I was in Iskon Bangalore for about five years. Before the big temple in Bangalore. Before mm. that. It was just a very small house. And... Uh, and I had heard from Prabhupada, right? I had heard some things that Prabhupada had said that people in Iskon, they can go and they can learn Archika, Panchratra Agama, from Sri Vaishnavas. Specifically, Prabhupada, uh, in the last year or so of his life, he installed uh, some murtis, opened a temple in Hyderabad, mm. Nampali Station Road, Iskon. Mm. And uh, at that time, uh, the person in charge of ISKCON in South India, he wrote to Prabhupada and said, can we get some Sri Vaishnavas to do the Prana Pratista? Mm. Yeah, Prabhupada said, yeah, we can get them. Because in, in North India, in Vrindavan, when they did the Prana Pratista for uh, the ISKCON temple in Vrindavan, they got the local pundits, but the local pundits are smartest, mm. you know. But you have to use them because in that place, it, otherwise you, the, your temple will not be accepted, right? Mm. So... So he, Prabhupada had those people do it. He didn't like so much the way they did it. But then Prabhupada came to Hyderabad and he, he, he said, okay, you can get. So at that time, he got one, uh, one Archika with his group, his party, called M.R. Sampat Kumar Bhatta. Not the Sampat Kumar Bhatta from Melkoti. Mm. Not that. I also know that person. Mm. But he's also a great person. But, but uh, M.R. Sampat Kumar Bhattacharya from Tulsi Ram Dasmat in Bangalore in Cantonment. So, he, of course, he's passed away now. Uh, so, Prabhupada had said, if ISKCON people, my disciples, if they want to learn, they can learn from that person. Because I was impressed by the way he did the, the Prana Pratista and everything in, in Hyderabad. Mm. So, I said, okay. 
that's why I'm coming to Bangalore. I'll meet this person. Hmm. So I met, uh, met him and I said, uh, he said, okay, you want to learn something? So then you come with me and we will, we will go around and we will, uh, I have several, I have several uh, different pujas that I have to do. And, uh, you know, Kumbha, Kumbha Abhishekam, uh, you know, uh, some Prokshanam, all these different things. Mm. And uh, you see it. You see it. Oh, okay. And then by seeing, you, you will understand. So I used to take photographs and uh, I used to take, uh, take tape recordings. In those days, we had cassette tapes. And then uh, also, um, uh, I, 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 I wanted to learn more and more. Then he said, okay, so... Uh, I am doing everything, but you need to, you need somebody, you, I, I showing you the practical, practical, uh, pujas, but you need somebody to teach you the theoretical. So you have to go through, you have to go through some text like, uh, Pratishtavidi. You have to go through this. So he, he told me there's another person. So this person was, uh, the late, uh, Y.R. Vasudev Bhattacharya. And he was the... Uh, professor of Pancharatra Agama at Maharaja's Sanskrit College in Mysore. Mm. So at that time, he had just retired. So Sampat Kumar told me, you, you can go to him and you can, you can uh, study with him the, the theoretical and you can study the practical with me. You can see the showmanship and everything, what I'm doing. Mm. And you can put them together like that. Okay, good. And also he said, uh, also he said, this, I am, I am, he's a Watagalai and this, and that other person is a Tengalai. Mm. So at that time I didn't know there's any difference, mm. there's any difference, but then I came to know. Okay. Uh, who was Watagalai? Who was Tengalai? Uh, M. R. Sampat Kumar Bhattacharya, he was a Watagalai and the uh, Y.R. Vasudev Bhattacharya, he was a Tengalai. Okay. They were, they were the heads of the All India Archic Association of Karnataka. Mm. They were the vice presidents, and they, they made the the minister the minister the mm. minister for endowments and so they made him the the the, the head yeah mm. of the head. But he didn't do anything. These vice presidents, so one water guy, one tangle like, like that. So then, uh, so I said okay. So I studied. Uh, I was studying, and uh, I could uh, I could I could read Devanagari, and I could understand uh, some Sanskrit a little bit, and. Uh, I became interested in, in all those all those things, and uh, so I so then uh, some people in ISKCON they said to me, "Oh, Prabhupada has now passed away, so we we don't have anybody who who to do our prana pratistas in different temples in the world. So can you do that?" I said, "Yeah, I can I can do it if I if I get a chance I can do it like that." So one 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 person in ISKCON in uh, in Germany he said. We want to install Narasimha Swami temple. So this was about, this was 42 or 43 years ago. Mm. So after I was studying. Which was in the 80s or 80s? Uh, yeah. Yeah. 80s, 80, 83, I think 82. Mm. So, uh, yeah, like that. So, so I said to Vaya Vasudev Bhattacharya, this is my, this is my first object. My first goal is to go to Germany and to do this, uh, to do this thing. At the same time, some friends of mine at Harvard University, mm. right? So I had some ISKCON friends, they were in different universities. They got an idea to microfilm. In those days, there was no scanners, okay? Before it was just taking pictures mm. of Talapatras and, and old books. And we wanted to, we wanted to save all the Vaishnava literature. So a friend of mine at, uh, at Harvard University, he had a, another friend and they got a grant. Mm. And, uh, and uh, in, in, in India, there's a thing, uh, in America, there's a thing called PL 480, Public Law 480. It means that in the 60s, uh, America gave some tractors and uh, fertilizer to India for the Green Revolution. And India would pay back America in rupees. Mm. when scholars came. Mm. So okay. scholars were coming to India and the Indian, Indian government would give them rupees and they could do their research. Mm. So this friend of mine, he said, okay, we got a grant of $100,000 in rupees and you, you can help us 
because you know all the places where they have all these talapatras and things. You can go around and you can do... So I, I was doing, at the same time, I was learning Pancharatriagama. At the same time, I was doing this project. I, I, uh, I, I hired a couple of Brahmins, uh, one from Udupi and one from Palgat. Hmm. And they were, at least the one from Palgat was a professional photographer. Hmm. So I, and I designed, uh, designed a system to... To, to, micro, to make uh, photographs of mm. Talapatras and things like that. Mm. And then this was, uh, this was possible by this government grant. And the, and the microfilm, I used, to, uh, I used to develop the microfilm myself. And then I will go to Chennai. And I will go to the American Embassy in Chennai. And I will give them the, the microfilm. And they send it to America. Okay. So I was doing that. You were still in Yuskon, learning Pancharat Ragama yeah. and doing this work. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So then, uh, then at that time, after learning uh, many things, then uh, Vasudev Bhattacharya, I said, now I'm, I, have, I have to go to Germany and do this Pranapatista. Mm. He said, okay. He said, but before you go, actually, you, it's important that you have this Archika Diksha. Mm. I didn't know anything about this. Mm. So I said, oh, already I have some Diksha in Iskon. He said, no, no, no. This is a Archika Diksha. It's a Pancharatra Agama Diksha. Mm. So this was in 82 or 83. And uh, so he said, we'll do this uh, Ar- uh, Chakrabja Mandala Diksha. Mm. Okay. What right. is it? Chakrabja Mandala. Chakrabja Mandala. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Chakrabja Mandala. So, so I had this, I have still the photographs and everything and some tape recording mm. uh, of doing the Maya Sutra and the blindfold and uh, Abhishekam and all these things. Mm. So, so I did that. And after I did that, I went to Germany and I did that Prana Pratista. So that was... Okay. But usually uh, in uh, the traditional Sampradaya, we don't... Uh, uh, we don't give dikshas to everyone, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, right. Mm. Okay. Somehow, somehow he said you he should do it. it. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 my teacher says I should do it. I okay, do okay. It. I just wanted to, you know, uh, clarify because uh, mm. when we are speaking this, when we are having this conversation, if I don't uh, object to that, many people may, of our sampradaya, yeah. may feel that that is the right way to approach uh, those things. But uh, in our sampradaya, you know, everyone is uh, open to get liberation, do service right. to Bhagavan and all. But there are some restrictions, of, right. course. of course. Of course. In, no- in North India, mm. normally any Brahmin mm. is uh, eligible to do uh, Pujari work, mm. Archika work. In South India, there will be specific Vaikanas Agama, Pancharatra Agama, and people will be trained. Yes. They'll be trained for that and they'll, and they'll learn mm. that and then they'll do that. And so, you know, you were speaking about uh, reciting Vedas and all. So mm. we have more restrictions in our Sampradaya. Right. Who can't recite this was, this was This happened to me in Vrindavan. Another reason why I came to South India mm. was because I, I was in Vrindavan and I was walking in Vrindavan and I heard, I went past some Pachala. Mm-hmm. And Prabhupada had told us to learn Prusa Shuktam. Mm. So we had, I had a tape recording of Prusa Shuktam and I had uh, the, written in English. But then I heard people chanting Vedas. So I went, to, I went in there and there was somebody teaching Vedas, Shukliya Javeda Madhyanina. Mm. So I went there and the teacher said, oh, okay, if you want to sit, you can sit and you can, you can learn mm. also, like that. So I started to learn. Then the next time I came, he said, please forgive me, mm. but uh, some other people in the ashram are objecting mm. to foreigners, to foreigners learning uh, Vedas. Like that, so I, no problem, no problem with that. Yeah, there are many restrictions. Yeah, yeah. What I want, to, the point I try to make is, see, whatever happened to you, mm. it's not that we agree upon everything, right? No, no. no. Yeah, it, it, you don't have to agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is what happened to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah I understand that. Yeah. That's why you are having a conversation, you know. Right, right. Uh, but the spect- the viewers who are going to watch this, right, they must not be thinking like, okay, so this is. Permissible in our sampradaya. No, not. not necessarily. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so, for example, I have been all over the world to many places. For example, we are here in Sri Rangam. Usually people think of Sri Rangam as the biggest Vishnu temple in the world. But actually, yeah. Yeah. There, uh, there is a place in Cambodia which is a bigger Vishnu temple. Yeah, yeah. Angkor Wat. It's called, it's called Vishnu Loka. 
This is called Buloka Vaikuntam, and that is called Vishnu Loka. Mm -hmm. After I leave here on Monday, I'm going to also go there. I had, be, I had been there before, and I want to go there again, and I want to make some research for that, mm -hmm. like that. And also, uh, Vietnam and Laos and Cambodia, all these places, they're all having Brahmins, and they're all having, they're all having caste system, they're all having uh, temples, but most of the temples are old, except in Bali. In Bali, there are people who are still following Hinduism. Oh, nice. Yeah. But in these other countries, they became Buddhist. Mm. Yeah. So even in Cambodia and Laos and, and, and uh, Vietnam, they have Hindu temples, but they became Buddhist. Mm. So I have been to Bali many times, and I've been to these other places many times. So I've seen, I've seen how, the, how, uh, how it's uh, spread. Because in the old days, from Vijayanagara Empire, it spread all across Asia. Yes, it is. Even yeah. the Chola Empire from Tamil Nadu, they were also present in those places. Right. So, Southeast Asia. Yes. So, there was a lot of Hindu presence there. Okay. Now, let's continue from your story. So, you were doing this uh, work, that film, filming work of uh, manuscripts and all. Yeah. And uh, you were learning from Vasudeva Bhattacharya. Swami. Right. Okay, so what happened after that? Okay, so then I, then I did that Prana Pratista in okay, Germany. Okay, so you went to Germany and you did I that? I did that. Okay, okay I came back. Mm. Then some other people in Iskon, they liked, the, they liked what I did. Okay, nice. So yeah. some other people in Iskon, they said, okay, we, now I got some requests to do in their place. Mm. So I started to do in North America, in, uh, in, in Canada, in, in, uh, in Asia, different places. Mm. I started to do uh, these ceremonies for ISKCON. They were all according to Pancharat uh, Mostly Padma Samhita. Okay. Yeah, Padma okay. Samhita. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, but the problem is mm. that maybe we do the maybe we do the Prana Pratista according to Padma Samhita, but then they do the Puja the according. daily puja they're doing according to their their ideas. What do they follow? They follow their Hari Bhakti Vilas. They follow that. They follow mm. the. They follow the. It's an abbreviation of Pancharatra Agama, mm -hmm. made for Gaudiya Sampradaya. Okay, okay. Right. So I have studied. I I particularly studied uh, all of the different uh, books for different sampradayas. So uh, Nimbark Sampradaya has a has a book called Kramadipika. We have a book. Uh, we have Hari Bhakti Vilas. There are there are many books. There are many books and. Uh, for different sampradayas. And so people will do different things. Even in Bali, the, the Brahmins do different, uh, they call it Agama Vaishnavism in Bali. Oh. Yeah. Mm. And many mudras, they do many mudras and things like that. So I, I did some research on that also. Okay, very nice. Yeah. Mm. So, okay, right. Uh, so you were doing all these Pranapadishtas, and yeah. then what happened? Um, okay, so then so this I, was all in the eighties, right? Yeah, in the eighties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I decided. Then I decided. I'm. I. I am. I am understanding a little bit about different sampradayas, mm -hmm. but I want to go more in depth. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, uh, let me join uh, Madras University, mm -hmm. and I did a BA in Vaishnavism in Madras University at the time. At that time, Venkat, uh, uh, M. A. Venkata Krishnan was the Dr. Venkata Krishnan was the head of the department. Mm -hmm. So I did that uh, course. Mm -hmm. While you were still in ISKCON? Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then, then when I came to my, my teacher, Vasudev Bhatta, he gave me a certificate and said, said I have taught him about uh, Tinamanjanam and these different things, Pranapatista. He said, and, he, and he is, it's possible he can learn more about Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, Ramanujya Sampradaya. Mm. He wrote, it's possible he can learn more mm. about Ramanujya Sampradaya. So... Whenever you met uh, these scholars, yeah. how would you communicate with them? All they Mostly English, yeah. They were all versed in English, well yeah. versed in English. They were all versed in English, yeah. Yes. And then we, and then, so, uh, then after, after I was doing the, the course for Madras University, then I went more deeply into the philosophy and the doctrines of Sri Vaishnavism. Because I, I really didn't know what is the difference between Dvaita, Advaita, Vishishta, Dvaita, 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 Shuddha, Dvaita. There's so many different, mm. slight differences. So I, I wanted to know, and I went into it. Then I became, then I understood, oh, there's a difference between Wadagalai and Tengalai also. Mm. So I studied also that. Mm -hmm. And so then, then I, I was very interested in the fact that, uh, that uh, the, the later Tenacharyas, 
had written some very interesting books like Mumukshapadi and uh, and uh, Srivatsabhushanam and uh, and so I, I, I began to study those things also. Mm. Uh, these were all self studying. Yeah, mm. mostly. Yeah, mostly. Yeah, mostly. Of course, when I, I had gone to Melkote in Melkote, uh, I, I had uh, I had met uh, Doctor um, M A Lakshmi Tadachar. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, M. A. L. War is his son. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So at that time, he was starting his he was starting his Academy of Sanskrit Research. Mm. So he he said I knew a little bit about at that time computer uh, using doing Devanagari and doing different scripts was only available in Apple computers. Oh. So I said to him, oh, I can show you how to do this, you know. And so I helped him to 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 do those things. And so I helped him to set up that uh, that computer section in in uh, Melkot. Melkot, yeah. Mm. And I knew Alwa when he was a young boy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Then later on, later on, I decided that uh, uh, can I get Alwa to do some uh, Talakshepam, you know, mm. for YouTube or something like that. So I mm. can. So I got him to do Momukshapadi and. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you joined. Uh, M.A. Vaishnavism in Madras Sanskrit College. B.A. Uh, only B.A. Madras University, right? Madras yeah, M.A. was only in Tamil medium, so I couldn't do it. Oh, okay. B.A. Yeah. Oh, get it. Okay, yeah. B.A. Vaishnavism. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wish I could do M.A. more, but... Uh, maybe it's available now? It, no, it? Maybe. It might be available now. Don't we don't know. know. I'm not sure. Okay. So, yeah, this was in early 90s? Uh, maybe. Maybe, uh, uh, yeah. At early 90s, yeah. Mm. At that time, I wanted to I, I, I wanted to buy a house, and Rangaraj Bhatta, he said, okay, it's not possible for foreigners to buy a house. Mm. I said, okay. Then after, after the Gulf War, first Gulf War, there was a Narasimha Rao government. Mm. And Narasimha Rao government, they liberalized the economy. They began to liberalize the economy. I think uh, Manmohan, Singh was, Manmohan Singh was the finance, finance minister before yeah. he became prime minister. Okay. So, uh, so... They then they liberalized. Mm. This is before 2000. This is way before way 2000. Before early, way before early 90s. 2000. Yeah, early 90s. Early yeah. 90s. At that time, at that time, I said, okay, now it's liberalized. Now I can I can purchase a house. Mm. So I looked around in Sri Rangam and I I, I, bought, I bought a house over in uh, Eastgate. Okay. Okay. Kilgarasal. <laughs> but uh, even when you bought that house, you were still in Iskon, right? Uh, Affiliated to Iskon. I mean. I was. Uh, the thing is, I'm living in Sri Rangam. Mm. I have a house in Sri Rangam. Mm. I'm studying Sri Vaishnavism. Mm. I mean, it's obvious to everybody that I'm interested in Sri Vaishnavism because I read about, I read about the, the doctrines of Tenacharya Sampradaya, mm. and uh, and about how the, the Lord Himself is the Upaya. Yes. So that was very simple uh, philosophy for me. Mm. I th- I could understand that. Because mm. I, I, so many other Vaishnava Sampradayas, they say, you have to do this, you have to do that. There's so many things that you have to do. You have to have Adhikari to do this and do that. Otherwise, you, you cannot uh, make any advancement and towards moksha. But Manavala Mahamunigal is, uh, and, and they're making it very easy for people. The, the, the path of property is very easy. Yes. So I thought, uh, okay, this is, this is, I like this very much. So at that time I I became more on the side of uh, Sri Vaishnavism. Mm. Still I was still I was doing some things for Iskon occasionally, like that. Even today, uh, I think two years ago it was the 40th anniversary of installing that deity of Narasimha in Germany. They the people there they said you come there and we'll have a anniversary mm. of the installation. Okay, so I went there, mm. like that. So still still sometimes Iskon people will call me and if they if there's some festival or something like that I go. Okay. No problem. I'm not against this con. Okay. You were staying in Shirangam. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what happened first was I bought the house. Hmm. It it was very difficult to buy the house. There was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, formalities. Formalities, yeah. Hmm. A lot of formalities. And so one trip at that time at that time I came, and the one trip was was just to buy the house. Hmm. So I just locked the house and go. Then I, next trip, I have to renovate the house. Then again, go. At that time, I was living uh, outside. I was living outside India. I started living outside India in, in uh, Los Angeles. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At that time, I was working with ISKCON uh, in their uh, department of Sanskrit, putting diacritics on the 
using the computer to put diacritics on all the books mm. and discuss putting what uh, in ISKCON they they will give the original Devanagari mm. afterwards they will give a transliteration yeah, yeah 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 so the transliteration system they use is called International Association of Sanskrit Transliteration mm. so it allows you to 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 properly tra- to properly pronounce the Sanskrit okay okay yeah, so I have to do that and I was doing that for a while okay. and uh, then. Then after I bought the house, then I said, okay, now I have the house. Now the house is renovated. I'm going to come here. I'm going to stay for one year. Mm. So normally they'll give six month visa. So I said, okay, I'll extend the visa. I'll try to extend the visa. So I had to go to the department here in Trichy to extend the visa. They had all the forms were in Tamil. I didn't understand. <laughs> and then I said, why all the forms are in Tamil? He said, because we are getting people coming from Sri Lanka because there was a war in Sri Lanka. Mm. So mostly we are getting Sri Lankan refugees coming. Mm. So we don't, we don't have forms for foreigners. Mm. Okay. So, so I extended the visa and I stayed one year. I said, I want to stay in Sri Rangam for one year then fully, mm. even though it gets very hot in the summer, I want to stay and I want to mm. see all of the Utsavas of Ranganatha Swami mm. in Namparamo. I want to see all of them throughout the year. So I, I, I saw all of them. I believe you were married by that time, right? Yeah. yeah. What, yeah, yeah. When was that? Uh, when was that? When I bought the house. I bought the house. I was married before I bought the house. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Mm. So in maybe 88 or before. She was also an ISKCON. ISKCON yeah, ISKCON person from, from Canada, mm. uh, born in Seattle, Washington. Okay. Like that, foreigner. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and uh, so, yeah. So we, so we decided to stay one whole year. Mm. Uh, my wife was... Um, my wife was in the middle of the summer. She was found it very difficult. So I said, okay, you go to Kota Canal. So I took her to Kota Canal and said, you stay there. I will be in Sri Rangam. Like that. So then I, uh, after, it came, uh, after Agni Nakshatra, then I brought her back. Like that. So we did that. So we wanted to see all the, all the festivals, all the mm-hmm. Yeah. You got initiated at some point of time, no? What, when was that? Right. Uh, how was that? Oh. What made you take that decision? You well, in, in ISKCON, it was 76 and 77. Mm. You know, it was, it was in, in ISKCON mm. uh, that they have two initiations that they do. Mm. Um, and, then, and then later on, I was studying Pancharatra Agama, so mm. there was the Acharya, uh, the Archika Diksha. Mm. You know, that's it. That's it. And then I came to Sri, uh, then I, after coming to Sri Rangam, after some time, uh, everybody assumed, everybody was assuming that you have done Panchasamskara. Oh. Uh, yeah. So then uh, Velakudi Krishnan, he was saying to me, you should, you should do uh, Panchasamskara. Because this uh, Panchatra Agama Diksha is a, a different thing. It's a different thing. It's not the same thing. Oh, okay. Like that. So then I, uh, then I took uh, Samashrayanam from uh, Perinambi. Mm. Okay. You and your wife, both? Yeah, both. Both, okay. You were in his con, and now you are completely uh, Sri Vaishnavite and Atena Acharya Sampradaya follower, right? Right. So, what are the differences or similarities, or what? Just uh, explore the, about them. See, uh, ISKCON and all of the other Vaishnava Sampradayas, and we can say even most religions. In in religions, we have uh, orthodox and we have heterodox. We have, we have, uh, we have in 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 Christianity, we have. Catholicism and, and Protestantism. So yes. the Catholics, they say, you are, you are justified by faith, but by works also. You have to, you cannot just have faith, you have to do something mm. like that. And the Protestants say you are justified by faith alone. So um, there's a difference in the, in the way that the Tenacharya Sampradaya sees things. Mm. Um, and uh, so, so, the, so basically, Basically, uh, there will be no, there will be no uh, qualification mm. for anybody to take Samashrayanam like that. Yeah. Yeah. So every, anybody can take Samashrayanam. Anybody can do property mm. like that. Even, uh, even Gajendra is an animal. He's doing property, right? Uh, is a lady and... Uh, uh, um, you have Vibhishana. Raksha. Saying, Vibhishana is a Raksha. Yeah. yeah. You have everyone yeah. doing Shana. Yes. Okay. So that uh, attracted you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because there's no there's no uh, disqualification. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody can everybody can take to it. So it's a But, very But uh, isn't it uh, the same everywhere like even ISKCON and all everyone has the uh, eligibility, you know, to take initiation? No, ISKCON has the eligibility. If you mm-hmm. join ISKCON, then you have to there are so many sadhanas you have to do mm-hmm. for for six months or one year or or more longer and then you, then they give some initiation and then they give another initiation mm. they so they it, it's like that for they they, they uh, follow the system uh they follow the system of the uh, upa, upakarika uh, guru right mm-hmm. they basically that in the in the in the upanishads and in the in the vedas it says that the guru should live with the person for one year and he has to test him and uh, and and he accepts him or doesn't accept him according to his qualification but after ramanuja ramanuja said oh okay i'm accepting everybody right i'm doing property for everybody and uh, so therefore therefore who has the desire to yeah uh, get liberated right yeah. asayude yorke ella mari argal korum it is said mm-hmm. so the basic eligibility is now just to have the desire to attain bhagavan nothing mm-hmm. else right mm-hmm. yeah okay so that attracted you a lot yeah definitely okay so uh, when was that uh peridambi uh, maybe i don't know 10 10 more years more than 10 years ago no okay yeah. okay so 2000s yeah so, because uh, uh this is a very uh, this is a very orthodox place mm. so even though in other parts of india there'll be other people giving some ashram here in here in uh here in sri rangam they're accepting only descendants of 74 simhasana adipatis mm. yeah yeah very nice so what are you doing now what is no. i am retired now Hmm. since just before covid i so i bought a house in australia hmm. right so i had the house in australia we're living in australia i so i had two houses then i decided i wanted to buy a small place in hawaii hmm. and my wife didn't like australia eventually after 3 years we moved back so we bought a house in hawaii we sold the house in australia so now we have two houses oh from sri rangam and sri rangam hawaii yeah sri rangam and hawaii so you are uh, for our viewers <laughs> sometimes uh, you can find uh, this swami here uh, riding a bicycle or yeah. running a tiruman and uh, <laughs> wearing a dhoti so so that is how we also met okay yeah yeah okay now that you have come to ramanuj sampradaya yeah. uh, you of course you would want to preach this to many foreigners no sure so what is the experience what is happening all around the world what can some pe- people like us do yeah so many that? many people many people uh, that i met mm. through iskon and even outside of iskon mm. like that i tell them about the advantages of sri vaishnava sampradaya mm. i'm we are not not against uh, other vaishnava sampradayas mm. so i decided to i decided to make a uh, i decided to make a uh, a non-profit uh, a non-profit association called vaishnava dharma international mm. so i registered that in hawaii i registered that even in india it's a trust so then uh so then uh what uh, what we're doing is basically i want to preach vaishnavism all types of vaishnavism it's not uh, not limited to shri vaishnavism but if people are more interested in shri vaishnavism then we can teach them about vaishnavism so we have we have i have a whatsapp group for for people who are interested in pancharatra agama and i have another one who are people who are foreigners mm. or uh but they've come to shri vaishnava sampradaya mm. so mostly if you find anybody <laughs> around the world who's come to shri vaishnava sampradaya they know me and they've most of them have come to because of me okay so what was your original name like the, the name given by your parents uh gregory j greg j okay then the name uh in iskon uh, in iskon they give a name gora keshava das okay and uh, perinambi swami retained yeah, that name Ke- keshava ramanujadas keshava ramanujadas yeah, right yeah. okay easy oh, very nice nice <laughs> okay that's how we know you now keshava ramanujadas yeah. ji yeah. okay or so, they say cycle swami <laughs> cycle mama <laughs> cycle mama <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 okay yeah. who were the most influential people for uh, you coming to sampradaya uh, i think uh, 
Obviously, ob- obviously, we could not have come to Vaishnavism without ISKCON. ISKCON. Mm-hmm. So, without Prabhupada spreading ISKCON around the world, we could not have known about Vaishnavism. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, coming to Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, was, it was a gradual thing. Yeah. So, first of all, studying Pancharatra Agama. So, those persons who, my teachers who taught me Pancharatra Agama. Mm. And then I became more and more interested in the, in the philosophy of mm. property and these things. Mm. So, then taking the course in... Yeah, in many people, Europe. when we speak about Agama, they think that it's only regarding rituals. But actually, mm. the Agama has the Jnana Khanda. Yes. Uh, Jnana Khanda where... Uh, Jnana Kriya Charya. Yeah. And, uh, and so, there is a lot of... Things most Yoga. M- many pramanams that we quote are from Pancharat Ragama right. regarding prapati and all. Right. Yes, yes. So the Agama Acharyas. Okay. The, so uh, I can't. I don't want to say that one 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 teacher was more influential than another teacher. Yeah. It was a gradual progression, mm. and uh, it was a realization mm. that came about, you know, gradually, mm. and so eventually. Then what happened was, of course. Uh, uh, I, I retired about three years ago mm-hmm. because it's the minimum age to retire in America and, uh, and COVID was coming. Mm-hmm. So we, we retired basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was, I was here when COVID happened. Okay. I had to escape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they so, clo- they closed, Modi closed the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had to fly. I got the last flight out from Trichy oh. to Singapore. <laughs> okay. 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 So, uh, but I now guess. I'm, re- now I'm retired. You're retired? Yeah, I don't need to work. You're just spreading this, uh, whatever you have, whatever knowledge you have gathered over the period yeah, of time. but I'm also learning more. I have to learn more. I'm not a scholar. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a student. Mm. I'm always a student. I'm, so I'm sure. trying to learn more and more. That's all. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. So it was very, uh, it was glad speaking with you. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you also had a good conversation. And I also hope that uh, this would prove inspirational to people uh, who are watching this video. Mm. Yeah, what I have to say is that is in order to spread Vaishnavism, mm. any form of Vaishnavism, uh, to, other, to people all around the world, there may have to be some concessions made to some... You know, we have... We, we, for instance, in Bali, we have Brahmins. We have Brahmins in, in Thailand and these places. There's different, uh, different societies around the world. Mm. And... Uh, we don't, you know, just like Chinajir is going to foreign countries, so many people are not going because they're very orthodox, like that. So if you don't go, you can't really, it's difficult to spread things. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course, you can do it in the phone, you can do it in Zoom, but... The technology is becoming very yeah. very nice, no? Maybe we, should, we will have virtual gatherings coming soon. Good. Maybe they, will, they would be helpful. But again, yeah... There may be some conscious uh, compromises that uh, people take. They may do that. Hopefully, the Sampradayam spreads a lot. Uh, let's pray for that uh, sure. to Bhagavan. And uh, also, with that note, let's end this podcast. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Shrimati Ramanujaya. Shrimati Ramanujaya Namaha. Adiyan Ramanujadasan. Adiyan Ramanujadasan. Yes. <laughs> that defines our Sampradayam. No? Yes. Adiyan Ramanujadasan. Hmm.